Stocks getting hit again on North Korea worries. Here now is Andy Caprin, Director of Research at Region Atlantic. So, Andy, another show of force by Kim Jong-un. Is mm -hmm. this uh, just background noise or something to really make portfolio adjustments off of? I think it's more than background noise, and I think it's something investors should get used to for at least the next few weeks. What I've seen in the market basically ever since November, ever since, ever since the election, politics has gotten a lot of the credit for the market rally, but really what I think has happened is earnings. Um, every significant leg of the up market since November has been driven by really solid earnings reports in each quarter after that. Um, the most recent quarter, uh, the earnings circus just closed. Um, so what does that mean for the next six or seven weeks until mid-October and the earnings uh, season for the next quarter reopens? It means that there is going to be a vacuum of really good news from, from corporate earnings. So we have nothing to obsess over. Well, well nothing to obsess over. And really, the, the big problem I think that creates is not a whole lot of positive potential news um, because what's left out there for the next few weeks, things like North Korea, things like Washington, D.C., <laughs> Trump tweets, um, any one of those things can, can hit the market. Now, what we're seeing this morning is uh, futures are down about half a percent on North Korea. Not huge, um, but we're, we're, we're filling that vacuum with negativity. But we're seeing gold uh, near its 2016 high of 1375 an ounce. Mm -hmm. After doing nothing this year, how much of your portfolio should you allocate to gold, especially in these times? So I'm averse to allocating to gold. I think it's a, I think it's a more of an emotional investment that people flock to when they're worried. Um, if you look at gold over the very long term, it doesn't really produce a high rate of return over and above inflation. I think stocks and bonds are going to be able to do that over the long term. So gold is. Gold is a hedge um, and less uh, of an investment, in my opinion. We're also seeing the euro rise now at $1.20, another mm -hmm. example of the euro becoming a safe haven asset in <laughs> times of worry, which is pretty incredible. I mean, if you told me that a year ago, yep. I would have thought you were crazy. Mm -hmm. um, how does this change your view on European stocks, which was one of the most popular trades of the year, right, Europe versus U.S.? Still very positive on European stocks. I actually think that the, uh, the rally in the euro and the fall in the dollar is, is very underreported. I mean, what's going on? In February, in early February, the dollar hit a 15 plus year high relative to a basket of other currencies. What we've seen since then is a double digit decline in the dollar. Of course, corresponding double digit gains in the euro, in the yen, and a host of other currencies. What the hell is going on? The U.S. is raising interest rates. The U.S. Federal Reserve is selling bonds. Well, what's going on is everybody else had a very low bar to clear. Mm -hmm. um, Europe had a rolling debt crisis. That seems to have been nipped, not necessarily in the bud, but finally nipped. Um, and that's producing, finally, some economic progress. All right, bottom line, before we let you go, one actionable tip for people worried about North Korea. What do they do with their portfolio? Wait until October. Ah, okay, when we have more earnings news. Mm -hmm. All right, Andy Capron, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.